Hello, in this section of the video we're going to cover one of the calculator's most used features of all, and that is the ability for it to, when you're looking at a plot of two functions that intersect, um, the calculator has the ability to calculate that intersection point right there on the graph. And let me tell you, that is a really useful feature because a lot of times on a test you'll be asked to calculate the intersection point, or maybe you're trying to plot two functions. Uh, or maybe you're solving a system of equations in algebra. You know, you have two equations and it says find the solution and you're, you calculate the answer. Well, a great way to check your work is to plot both of those equations and see where they cross, which is actually the method of, uh, a method of solution that you can use is to graph them. And so you can use the calculator to check your work. So let's go into the y equals menu and let's put two functions in that we know are going to cross. So we'll put x squared and let's do x squared minus 4. And that's going to shift a parabola down four units. Let's go down here and let's just put y is equal to x. I'm reasonably confident that these two things are going to cross each other. Of course, my zoom level is, uh, is not the best. So let's go and zoom standard to see where we're at. And we're going to see here's one guy. And then, boom, we've got the graph crossing. So we have two intersection points. One of them is here and one of them is up here. So if you had these two equations, these two guys right here, y is equal to x squared minus 4 and y is equal to x, and you were asked on a test, calculate the solution to the system of equations, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. You can do substitution. You can also do graphing. And in any case, you can check your work to your answer by simply graphing these guys and calculating the, the uh, solution. Now, you can hit the trace button, and you can go over here and, and try to get close, right? But you can see it's not going to be exact. It kind of skips right over it. So it's not going to be an exact thing. So what you need to do is go back into the Calculate menu up here. And right under here, you have Calculate the Intersection. So hit number 5. And basically, it's going to do the exact same thing as before. It's just a tiny bit different. In this case, the calculator, because you, you, know, you could have nine different graphs plotted on this thing at one time. Um, so it's going to ask you first, what is the first curve that you have that you're trying to calculate the intersection of? And so... Right now, I'm tracing on this curve right here. So I'm going to hit enter, and this is going to be curve number one. And curve number two, it's going to snap to curve number two, and you see I'm tracing along this guy. So it's asking me, what is the second curve? So I'm going to hit curve number two. Now, my recommendation is when you're doing this, just put two, the only two graphs on the calculator that you care about. Just clear everything else off. But the calculator is asking you for graph 1 and 2 because if you had seven different graphs on here at once, then it would need to know which two are the ones that you're trying to find the intersection between. So it's, it would ask you those, those questions. But for me, I always just plot the two that I care about and clear everything else off. So after you identify the two functions, it's going to ask you for a guess, just like before. So all you have to do is just put the cursor anywhere close to this intersection point. So here it is. We hit Enter. It's going to think for a second. It's going to tell me the intersection is x is equal to 2.562. So that's over here. y is equal to 2.562. So that's up there. And that's the intersection point. Now, obviously, it only found this intersection point. So if I want to find the other one, I need to go back to number 5, intersection. And it's going to ask me the same thing again. First curve. So I'm on this graph. I'm going to hit Enter. And second curve. You see I'm on this graph right here. I'm going to hit Enter. Guess. Let me just scoot right on down this line over here. And I'm just going to get reasonably close. Now let me just show you. I'm going to intentionally not be, see, I'm not even really on that intersection. I'm going to be off that intersection a little bit. And let's see what happens. Let's hit Enter. And it's going to snap and tell me the proper intersection is negative 1.562, negative 1.562. So you see, your guesses don't have to be exact. They just have to be in the neighborhood because the computer algorithm in there uses that guess to start hunting around for the intersection. So the closer you are, the faster it's going to take. Now let me go back into the Y equals button and show you what it would look like if I had a third graph here. So what if I had um, X cubed on top of everything else? Let me go back to the graph. And you see now I have another graph there. So let's go and see. Let's zoom in a little bit tighter so that we can really see what we're looking at here. And I want to see all these intersection points. So I'm going to hit Enter. And I'm going to go this way. And really what I'm interested in is looking at all the values that these, all of these graphs intersect. Because it's very, it gets confusing if you don't know exactly what you're looking at. So let's go and hit this. And we'll have all the graphs redrawn. 
at a nice zoom level so we can see some multiple intersection points. So you see what we have going on. We have this parabola intersects with both the line and the x cubed graph. We also have some other intersections going on over, across the screen out of, out of visibility here. Um, so those really don't, we don't even see. We also have the graph of x cubed crossing with the line right here in one, two, three different places. So you see it would get confusing if you didn't know what graphs you were talking about. So if we go to the calculate button, let's go to the intersection. What if I want to find what this value is of this intersection? So it's asking me, what is the first curve? I don't want to hit enter here because see, you see how I'm, I'm on this curve down here. Uh, and I want to find this intersection. So I need to hit the down button uh, to go and cycle to Y2 because that's going to, to basically, when you hit down and up, it's going to cycle from Y1 to Y2 to Y3 and so on. So this curve is the line. That can be curve number one. Okay, I'm going to hit enter. What is the second curve? You see now I'm tracing along, and it even tells me right here, I'm tracing along Y3, which is this, this curved one down here. And so I'm going to hit enter here to tell it that that's the second curve. Now what is my guess? Now all I need to do is scoot down and give it a guess reasonably close. These two tick marks don't really have anything to do with the guess. It's just basically telling the calculator what curves to use. So I'm going to get close to my point. I'm going to hit enter. It'll think for a second and tell me that the intersection is exactly at y is equal to negative 1. I'm sorry, x is equal to negative 1 and y is equal also to negative 1. So there's the intersection point. So you can literally sit with your TI calculator with as many graphs as you want on that screen and you can find the intersection of any of those curves, which is a real time saver for solving systems of equations in algebra. And a lot of times you'll solve them by hand, like maybe your teacher would say, solve the system of equations by addition. And you would have to do it by addition on your test, but it's a huge um, confidence boost to solve the answer and then plot it, show yourself that it's correct. Okay, now you don't have to worry about it anymore. You can move on to the next problem without worrying that you got the wrong answer. Very, very useful feature. Play around with it, and it's very easy to use. It'll save you a great deal of time.